imagine melting chocolate in your mouth, a Chagall painting in front of your eyes, and beautiful violin music in your ears. Well, that is exactly what happens at the lecture concerts given by violinist Noella. She tells stories of music, art, and people. She's here in the studio. Hello, Noella. Hi. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank you for inviting me. So, your lectures are called lecture concerts. Yes. Um, why is that? Well, it's simply because I give a lecture and I play music at the same time. <laughs> mm. And uh, the topic for the concert goes like this: the moment you see art and uh, the moment you hear art mm -hmm. and see music, right. and that is the title of uh, the book you published two years ago as well. Yep. Now, normally we see art and hear music. <laughs> it's the other way around. <laughs> right. Well, um, artist, whether it's a musician or painter, dancer. Or a writer, um, they all want to express something, right? Yeah, they want to share their thoughts and feelings, but the medium is the only difference. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you want to uh, express that you love somebody, you could either uh, say it, draw it, or um, sing it, mm. or you can dance it if you want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, if it's a word, then you probably would say, um, I love you, to be very simple. And if it's a drawing or a painting, you might want to draw or paint a heart or something like that. And if you want to express by music, uh, you probably would play something uh, nice and romantic. Romantic, right? yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, even if the mediums are different and you can express the same kind of feelings, and that's what I have found between the composers and artists, that they share the same kind of message in their works. Mm -hmm. uh, so I talk about connections and similarities between a painter and a composer in my book and in my lecture, and how they share their concepts and ideas and how their outputs resemble each other. Mm. Mm. And I found uh, many interesting connections actually um, for example Beethoven and Goya they uh, both were revolutionary figure and they both lost hearings yeah believe mm. or not and mm. Lautrec and Bizet uh, they both died at age of 37 at the same age and they both depicted the reality and so forth mm. so it was uh, it was very interesting that I often found that when their outputs resemble each other they often had a similar life background mm. and so they share the same kinds of emotions and feelings so yeah so what I wanted to show by saying hearing the painting and seeing the music was that these two art forms are connected to each other and share the same kinds of message and feelings mm. well by the way um, Kandinsky and Scriabin actually saw music and um, heard painting yeah yeah oh, yeah, okay. because, yeah because so that's your inspiration they, no, no, yes 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 yeah, they, because they had the synesthesia uh, it's called yeah, synesthesia, which is the sensories that are um, connected to each other. So when uh, when they see color, they actually hear music, uh -huh. and at the same time. So for example, Kandinsky would look at the color like red and hear a trumpet in oh, his head. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and Scriabin would hear like do and see color red and so forth. That's interesting. That is interesting, right? Kandinsky, <laughs> by the way, is my, is my favorite painter. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> now, you've uh, released uh, two uh, violin albums. You've been an uh, active violinist for a long time. Um, how, what motivated you to start this uh, lecture series? Well, um, I've been playing the classical music for all my life, mm. but um, I always had a question, why classical music is hard to enjoy, um, same in art. So over the last centuries, in my opinion, the artists have uh, sort of locked themselves in a certain <laughs> circle mm. and would want to remain in there. And uh, because there are not enough of communication with the public, it gets uh, even harder to understand art. Mm. So uh, back in, well, but back in the history, uh, classical music was actually a popular music. That's right. Right? And so was paintings. So um, I wanted to get out of that circle, so to say, and communicate with any as many people as possible, sharing that the art could be for everyone and mm. could be easily enjoyed. Then yeah. <laughs> what's the reason for giving out chocolate to the audience? Oh, the chocolate. Well, it's chocolate is something else. I mean, whenever I went to concerts, I uh, I wished that I could eat something sweet. Mm. But I couldn't because foods are usually not allowed in concert exactly. halls. <laughs> yeah. But something like chocolate mm. doesn't bother anyone because it doesn't uh, make any noise, right? 
So I often would hide chocolate in my bag and mm. <laughs> eat it during concerts. And that feeling of melting uh, in my mouth while listening to music was just satisfying and special. Ah. So, um, yeah, that's it. In my concert, I just wanted people to experience the same kind of feeling that I felt. <laughs> I, I find that to be a brilliant idea. Uh, during your lecture, I understand that uh, you ask this question to the od- audience. Mm. There are so many artists in the world, but mm. why are only a few remembered by history? Why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, um, I thought that on that issue for a long time, mm. and um, what I have concluded was that they had three common factors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One was uh, creativity. I mean, yeah, they were all creative persons that they thought of something that nobody ever did or tried. And the other thing was endurance, a very obvious one, I I must say. Mm. And the last one was sympathy. So uh, Mm. even though you make something that nobody ever did or... uh, and and you try really hard. If you cannot gain others' sympathy, then I must say the artist has tendency not to be remembered. Mm. So I thought that oh, those are the three factors. Oh, right. Very good uh, insight, I must say. Mm. Um, your audience ranges from college students to office workers. Um, what is the message you're trying to get across to them? Uh, and does the content of the lecture vary depending on uh, the audience? Right. Um, well, the good thing about art is that you can associate with anything and anybody. And so the basic contents are the same, but the length or the depth could vary. Um, but previously, I talked about three factors that the artist had in common. But now, uh, if you look at those three factors, creativity, endurance, and sympathy, mm. they are very familiar words. Right? We use those words everyday lives. So what I say to my audience is that if you have those three factors, even if you are not an artist, you could at least live an artistic way. Ah, yeah. okay. So those three factors um, mm. are something that we should remember, um, yeah. even if we're not artists. You started playing the violin at age five. You kept on going. You actually have a, a degree, a doctoral degree yes. in musical arts. Mm. Um, when would you say you started in, uh, noticing your interest towards art? Well, um, my father is an amateur painter. Ah. Yes, he's actually a businessman. But, so art was uh, just always around me. Now, my father was not very much into classical music even though I majored in <laughs> And me, um, I was not very much interested in art either. So if we sit down and talk, we would uh, argue which one is more interesting or fascinating. Mm. And one day he was talking about uh, Monet, how his painting captures the atmosphere and loses contour compared to the painting of Voliere and so forth, and how he breaks the forms and rules and... Right. And there I thought of uh, impressionist composer Debussy, mm-hmm. who was actually a friend of Monet and he, uh, how his music resembled art of Monet. And I got very fascinated by that. And so since then, uh, it found, uh, I found it very interesting to search for other similar pairs of artists. Mm. And that's basically how I started the whole thing of connecting the Art and music. You must have done a lot of research for oh, that. I did, yeah. I did. Uh, um, where do you ordinarily find inspirations and ideas for your lectures? Uh, you write columns as well. I do. Mm. Yeah. Well, all over the place. I, I must say, um, I get it from everyday lives. Like, I tend to connect things. You know, I think uh, that has become one of my habit now that I connect mm-hmm. things. So if I see or hear um, any issues and I tend to think of a uh, historical events or artworks or something like uh, my dog and my cat <laughs> and so forth. So uh, basically I get them from all over, I guess. You know, yeah. Well, by now, uh, it, it must happen to you also mm. that uh, when you're looking at a painting, you're hearing music as well. Uh, I tried. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, now, most people do find it difficult to mm. appreciate art and classical music, and, and some of them are even um, embarrassed that they don't know mm-hmm, enough mm-hmm, about mm-hmm, art and classical mm-hmm. music yes, to yes. enjoy it. So w- what uh, tips or advice would you offer to them uh, to enjoy art and music better? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, artists are also human, you know. 
they are not gods. Mm. They all have emotions and they express their feelings on their works and sometimes they express their thoughts in their works. So if you approach from that angle, knowing that they are human beings like us who get jealous, be sad or happy and cry and so forth, so um, then you probably find less distance to them. Yeah. yeah, and art is not like math or science where you have a definite answer, right? No, and everybody no. has different interpretations. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Can we have a taste of your lecture? Can we have a sort of a mini uh, lecture here? Sure. Um, <laughs> it's really hard to give a lecture on the radio. I know, you know? without being able to see right. a, a painting. But you just have to imagine or look up the uh, you know, in, internet or something. Okay, well, let's have a taste yes. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about uh, two artists, Arma Tadema and Sung Sang. Well, Arma Tadema is a Netherlands-born British painter, lived from 1836 to 1912, and Sing Sang is a French composer, lived from 1835 to 1921. So they were one year apart, and if you look at their photos, they actually look similar too. <laughs> so um, Arma Tadema has a very uh, famous painting called Roses of Heliogabalus. Well, when I first looked at it, it just captured my eyes. It is full of beautiful roses. This is actual painting. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Beautiful colors. <laughs> um, beautiful details as well. Right. I yeah. mean, what, what do you feel? Like, you feel it, it's a feast or something, right? It's, it feels very... Uh, yeah. Yeah, happy light people. and happy, <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it used to be um, my favorite one, yeah, because it's just so beautiful, right? Mm. Until I was shocked that when I heard the story of it. I mean, uh, okay, the story of this painting, I mean, the title of this work is Roses of Heliogabalus. Mm. Now, uh, we did then get wonder, who is Heliogabalus? Or what right? is it? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Heliogabalus was a, a corrupted Roman emperor, mm. famous for his eccentricity and debauchery. He ruled from uh, 218 to 222. And what he enjoyed was having a party, inviting many guests, and there was this big tub that he would fill in with rose petals. Ah. And people would get in there and enjoy swimming. But then the smell of roses are too strong that they were not able to breathe and get out of there. So they were actually uh, smothered to death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is known that the uh, emperor actually enjoyed watching them to die. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, what a scary scene, right? Yeah, scary scene, but the painting, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't feel that way. feel that way, <laughs> right, exactly. So, I mean, imagine if you are a guest invited to a party and there is this beautiful top filled with roses. I mean, who would not want to get in, in there? You exactly. know, I would. Mm. Yeah, but the deeper you get in, the sooner you die. So this painting has always reminded me of an opera by Sing Song, mm -hmm. uh, Samson and Delilah. Oh. Yeah, Delilah, uh, a beautiful, beautiful, attractive woman, tried to kill Samson, pretends that she is in love with him. Mm -hmm. Samson is just innocent guy, you know, he thinks she is in love with him too. And she sings uh, this beautiful song, My Heart Opens to Your Voice, with beautiful voice, mm -hmm. when, uh, when Samson gets wonder if she really loves me or not. So, here the lyric goes, my heart opens to your voice, like the flowers open to the kisses of the dawn. But, oh, my beloved, to better dry my tears, let your voice speak again. Tell me that you are returning to Delilah forever. Repeat to my tenderness the promises of all times, those promises that I loved. Oh, respond to my tenderness. Fill me with ecstasy. Samson, Samson, I love you. Mm. That's what De Delilah sings. I mean, what kind of man would resist a girl like Delilah? You know, attractive, beautiful girl singing this beautiful song. Kind of like the tub of roses. Yeah. Yes. Very tempting. Uh huh. Mm. So Delilah continuously asks Samson to tell her the secret of Samson's power. And, you know, guess what? Yeah, it's finally. Right. <laughs> Samson tells her that his power comes from his hair, hair. Right. And while he was sleeping, she shaves off his hair. Mm -hmm. And Samson loses all of his power and gets captured. So Delilah is like the roses of Heliogabalus, yeah. seducing, attractive. Yeah, but mm -hmm. finally ruins Samson's life. That's In, the story uh, behind yes. um, the roses of Heliogabalus and uh, uh, Samson and Delilah, uh, oh, the commonality between uh, them. 
So we're going to listen to some music from Samson and Delilah? Sure, mm. yes. Um, on the violin, actually. On that's the violin. Included yeah, in that's included in my second album. Okay, so we'll just remember the lyrics uh, that you read mm -hmm, to us earlier mm -hmm. and uh, listen to it in violin music. Yes, All right. Yes. My Heart Opens to Your Voice from Saint-Saëns, uh, Samson and Delilah, performed by Noella, sitting right here. <laughs> uh, so a couple more similarities between saint -Song and Alma Tadema. Yeah, uh, they had same, um, similar styles of, the, styles of their work. Mm -hmm. And besides that, their life uh, itself was uh, similar, I must say. Um, actually, the marriage was similar. Mm -hmm. because they both married to a 19-year-old girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting to bring it up. Then um, when uh, Alma Tadema was 35 and Simpson was 40. Okay, well, yeah. much younger girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also they were both involved in film. Uh, so Seng Sang was the first film music composer to the assassination of the Duke of Guise. Mm. Before then, uh, there was no music in the film involved. But Seng Sang was the first mm -hmm. one to do that. And Alma Tadema's painting were the inspiration to uh, Hollywood movie making such as uh, Gladiator. I see. So film influences as well. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you explain the painting and uh, the lyrics and the temptation behind uh, yeah. those two pieces, <laughs> it was a lot uh, more uh, easy and fun to understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so w what sort of future plans do you have? Well, um, I'm preparing for my second book and uh, I'll keep writing columns and giving out lectures and playing concerts. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Noella, for coming in, uh, giving us a mini lecture on the oh, spot like you. that as well. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you for inviting me. That's a uh, violinist and uh, columnist Noella, and uh, you can check out her website, noella.co.kr, that's N-O-E-L-L-A.co.kr, for her lecture concert schedule. 
And uh, with that, we're going to wrap up 1013 Main Street for this Friday. Thanks, as always, for uh, being with us. Uh, have a happy Friday and, and a great weekend as well. I'll meet you back here on uh, Monday morning at 10 o'clock on The Dot. And uh, taking us out today is Noella's very own music from our album. Uh, this track is called Tuge Tal.